the Orlando Wizard. We are here at Universal Studios for Halloween Horror Nights 30. And we are going to be doing the RIP tour. Now, if you watched uh, my videos in the past, I did that RIP tour video back in 2018. So this is the 30th anniversary. This is supposed to be absolutely epic. So we're gonna do some reviews on the houses. We're gonna check out and talk about the food. Um, and we're gonna talk about the tour. And I wanna see how the tour's changed uh, since 2018. Come along with us, hope you enjoy. We're about to check into the RIP tour. So behind me, over here by the Pineapple Fountain is actually where we're gonna be checking in and we're gonna be going through those double doors over there. If you look over here behind me, that's the main line over there just to get into Halloween Horror Nights. And that is going to get really, really long. It's only 5.15 right now. This opens at 5.30. So this line, like, all the years before is going to go way out here into uh, City Walk. We're inside, so once again, if you park in valet, it's important to give the person at the door here your valet card so they she'll stamp your valet for your redemption so you don't end up paying the 40 bucks. Then we're inside now and we're about to uh, get our lanyard and our pass for tonight. We have our RIP tour tonight. Um, our schedule is for 6 p.m. So we're gonna head over to Cafe La Bamba right now and uh, check in. Now, once the, it's cool you get this nice lanyard that you get to keep and take home and you have your RIP tour tag on it. Look behind me, here's the whole line for people just getting into Halloween Horror Nights. And the line goes way out there. Everyone in this holding area here is going to the RIP tour. Uh, it's going to be pretty busy tonight. We have quite a few people. Uh, I have talked to several people here and many of them have actually done the tour in the past. Lots of them are from out of town and figured we're only doing this for one night, so why not go for broke? Good luck to those. It's going to be a lot of fun. You do get to see all the houses. You get to have preferred seating at all the shows. Uh, and they feed you beforehand. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's right, kids. Jack is back. <laughs> I'm here to be your caretaker of the kill. Your director of demented destruction. I'm back to usher you into a celebration of Garfield storytelling. It's time to face your fear. To take a chance with Lady Luck and see if you can survive the mayhem of my buffet area for the RIP tour and uh, we'll see what we actually have this year if you watch my video from uh, 2018 and I'll link it um, on this video they had many big Wellingtons that were amazing so it looks like we have sliders to, uh, today those look like we have ranch chicken sliders spicy chicken sliders and beef sliders Ooh, we have fresh fruit, among other things. Asparagus. I'm a big fan of asparagus. And then we have cold cuts, which are great. Hey, if you're on keto. That's 
Lent mac and cheese. That looks pretty amazing. And barbecue brisket flatbread and wild mushroom flatbread. We have hot sugars. <laughs> The storyteller room. Um, so this is already a little different. Um, a couple years ago, they gave they put us all on the same table, so you couldn't just go everywhere and sit. You sat um, at your tour table. Oh, pretty good. Great. Uh, the souvenir drinks. The ghoul juice is a mango rum punch. The uh, tea party. That one is a. A, uh, Myers rum with honest tea, lemonade, huckleberry syrup. Ooh. And, um, what do you recommend? Uh, well, it depends. If you don't like very sweet, the, you know, the mango punch is extremely sweet. Uh, so the, the honest tea is a little less. Let's try the honest tea. The honest tea one? Okay. Yeah. Just the one? Yes. And then what do you have non alcohol? Uh, there's, there's water just over by the door over here. Uh -huh. uh, there's also Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite. Okay. Coke, Diet Coke, or Sprite bottles. Great, thank you. Okay. And that's fifteen ninety six. Go right ahead. And it's alcohol, so no pass holder discounts. Uh, no discount. Uh, if you continue to drink, try the food here. Um, well, and we actually we actually got some nice stuff. There's asparagus and meats and sliders. My favorite thing from a couple years ago was the uh, beef Wellington bites, and they were amazing. Is that what I got? No, it's a slider. No. Mm. So, I love asparagus. The yeah, asparagus is delicious. We're gonna try this spicy uh, chicken slider. Mm. So the spicy chicken slider is a little dry. It's not bad, but it's a little dry. We're gonna try the beef slider. Beef fire is pretty good. It's not bad. Um, really, all the rest is just cold cuts. You know, cold cut meats. It definitely feed, uh, feed you here. Lots of vegetarian options. Lots of meat options. And there's a bunch of things I haven't tried yet. But overall, the food's not bad. It's not bad at all. And there's a lot there. And we didn't even, even look at desserts yet. Alright, I'm gonna eat. And um, we'll show you desserts here in a minute. This is a their, their version of mac and cheese here. It's got chicken and corn. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, this is this is absolutely awesome. You know, honestly, uh, huh? the asparagus mac and cheese, that's really good. I also got one of these. It's um, kind of like a roll. Not a big fan. I do like the mint that is wrapped up in there. Cheese and mint. Actually, I like it better now that the mint's kicked in. Not bad. I'm not, I forgot what they called it. It's probably in the video, um, but it's not bad. So here's the desserts that we have. We have macaroons like they had before. Um, this is a pumpkin um, cream cheese thing. And 
and this is a crime scene cake. Uh, so we're gonna try these. All right, so here's the macaroon. Mm. The macaroon's good. It's very, it's made really well. A little sweet for me, a little too sweet, but not bad at all. The pumpkin one I really want to try. It looks like a piece of dark chocolate. Yeah. The pumpkin is amazing. Really, really good. Crime scene cake. Mm. It's a lot like a mousse. It's really, really good. But I think the pumpkin um, cream uh, pastry was my favorite. That was really, really good. So we're going to have a great time.
Knights 27. He is probably my favorite character that we've ever created. Yeah.
houses back to back right now. The second house that we go into is going to be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. When I said that one earlier, I heard a few woohoos, so I guess we have some Leatherface fans. Every year we like to have a slasher at our event, and this year it's, it's Leatherface. In 2016, we did a house based off of the film, the original film, and it was a scene-by-scene -scene walkthrough of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, this year, we decided to flip the script a little bit because we never repeat houses, and you are going to go behind the scenes of what might have taken place after the credits rolled in that original film. So you guys are going to see Leatherface's bedroom. You guys are going to see areas of the Sawyer home that you never got to see in the house or the film. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're all going to see if we can make it out of there alive. The first house we're going into is Universal Monsters, The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. This house means a lot to me because Frankenstein is one of my favorite classic monsters. So inside, we are going to see the sequel to The Bride of Frankenstein. At the end of that film, Frankenstein pulled a switch, declaring we belong dead, destroying the castle and killing everyone around it. So we thought, we're going to learn that the Bride of Frankenstein did, however, live. And she is now trying to rebuild her mate. We are going to try and see if she's going to become successful, but she may run into a problem or two because she found out the way to eternal life is immortal blood. And where do you get immortal blood? From Dracula's brides. So we're going to see if she becomes successful in this house. Are you guys ready for double houses? Yeah. All right, let's head on in. This really shows you how quickly we get into the houses, even compared to the express lines. So we did the, the Bride of Frankenstein, which is kind of the continuation, as you heard. That was a good house. Um, they had that open last year, and I absolutely loved it. All right, so we're gonna go in the Texas Chainsaw now. We're gonna wait for them to let, in, let us in again, and then we'll go around to that house. What'd you think of that last one? Not scary. <laughs> you one. jumped so many times. I did not! That was a blast. So now we're gonna go into uh, the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. I haven't seen this one, so I'm looking forward to this. All right, Chainsaw Massacre, that was actually pretty fun. It wasn't bad at all. So that's three down. The lines are insane here. So that really is one of the biggest perks about doing the RIP tour is you have zero lines. I mean, it's, we've only made, uh, had to wait maybe a few seconds to get into a house and uh, lots and lots of fun. We have restrooms right here for anyone who would like to use them. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a 10 to 15 minute bar stop at our Jimmy Fallon bar. That is one of my favorite bars because it is exclusive to VIP tour members. And you guys get a beautiful view upstairs to see the lines that you guys just skipped. So we're gonna go ahead and use those restrooms because there's no restrooms upstairs. And then we'll head upstairs uh, shortly. Of the two houses that we just went through, I think Bride of Frankenstein is my favorite. It's aesthetically beautiful, very well done, and the story is really great. The idea of using vampire blood to bring back Frankenstein's monster is a brilliant process. Of the three houses that we've gone through so far, I think it's Bride of Frankenstein and then the storybook one where you have the detective stories dealing with monsters. I really like that, and that was also very aesthetically beautiful. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house was good, um, but it, it was very similar to many other Texas Chainsaw Massacre houses I've been through before in the past. The two houses we just went through, what was your favorite one? The Bride of Frankenstein one had yeah. like a really good storyline to it. The Texas Chainsaw one, um, again, I did not make eye contact and tried to shuffle through as quickly as possible. <laughs> but it, that means it was good. I didn't see a lot of it. I understand.
understand. So of the three houses we've gone through, which is your favorite? One of the last two. I like the storyline of the Bride of Frankenstein, but I kind of in a weird, twisted way like the scare factor of the last one. Of the Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. Same? Yeah. Awesome. I don't like the Chainsaw one. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go up to the bar. Press it to the button. So what button do you press? Which button? Hi. Uh, I'll come back down for you guys. Uh, we are going to this one. We're going to a VIP only bar, which is pretty amazing. One of the nice things is we're going to be able to look outside and, and down upon uh, the main street there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be 11 of them. I'm going down to get the rest. Okay. Can you do a Bud Light? Yeah. Is that fun? Always. Whatever you want. Awesome. <laughs> oh. Look at the line. Is that for the bride? Yeah. I believe yeah. So. I'll get you guys. I know, you don't like giving the money. The Tooth Fairy comes and leaves you some money, or a toy, or in my case, chocolate, which was always melted, and then I would always get blamed for it, but that's beside the point. We're going to see James Westhorn losing his first tooth, but... He doesn't want to give it up to the Tooth Fairy. He wants to keep that tooth for whatever reason that may be. And the Tooth Fairy, they don't take too kind to that. So they are going to do whatever it takes to get that tooth from James. And that might mean that some people living with him may be impacted as they make their way to James. This is the glorious house we have this year. You guys are gonna love this one. It's themed to a pop-up book. So go ahead and look out for those little details as you walk through. I'm gonna go ahead and get you guys back there. Are you guys ready for the Tooth Fairy? Yeah. All right, let's head on back. What do you guys think of the Tooth Fairy? Awesome. You're always gonna make sure you give your tooth to the Tooth Fairy, right? Yeah. Alright, so the next house we are going to be going into is one of my personal favorites. It is HHN Icons Captured. We are going to be seeing all of the icons. Does anyone have a favorite icon? Chance. Just shout them out. Chance. Chance? Caretaker. Caretaker. He's my favorite. Anyone like Jack? No. No, no one likes Jack. Tired of Jack already? I don't like him. All right, so in this house, we are going to see all of them. Chance is in there a couple times. The caretaker has his own room. We are going to be going down into an underground lair where the icons live underneath the Universal Orlando Resort. They have taken up residence there, making all their old scares come back to life. We are going to see some of the icons' famous kills. We are going to see where they dwell. We are going to see everything about these icons. It is another anniversary house. So are you guys ready? Yay. Give me a hell yeah, Jack. Hell yeah, Jack. All right, let's go. We went through two houses. We went through Tooth Fairy and HHN Icons. Um, I hadn't seen the Icons one before and it was really good actually. Um, all the uh, primary Icons from past HHNs were there. Uh, Chance was there a couple of times. Uh, it was good. It was a really good haunt. I like that one. Tooth Fairy is one of my absolute favorites. It's, uh, it hasn't really changed. Uh, since the last couple of years, so if you've seen it before in the last few years, um, it's the same house, but it's a house that you just don't get tired of. It's just really, really good. Hey, what did you guys think? That actually was my like favorite it. one so far. I like I liked sort of the <laughs> almost gothic heavy metal vibe when you first walk in. Yeah. So On the AJ Gen yeah. icons, yeah. But um, a lot of jump scares sort of like scooted behind you and some of the other people of like, okay, statistically, they can't get me if I'm right behind other people. <laughs> What'd you think of the Tooth Fairy? 
That's one of my favorites is the Tooth Fairy. I just think it the story the and the set concept. Was really cool. From what I saw, <laughs> my eyes were open. So the idea is just close your eyes, hold on to the person in front of you, <laughs> hope like they don't steer you away. It's like, it's like hide and seek. If you, if you can't see them, they can't see you. Yeah, just don't make eye contact. <laughs> just don't make eye contact. I understand that theory. Do, like so the right now, would you say the HH in house is your favorite? I think that's the best. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was really, really good. Think of the scare zone. Nice. Good? I made in my rule. Don't make eye contact. You broke that, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you can't see their eyes, so you really didn't break that. Right, because they're wearing masks, so it's like, where are their eyes? Exactly. So we are going to be going through Crypt TV next, and then we're going to be making a bar stop before the show. We are going to be doing the show tonight. It is Halloween Nightmare Fuel. It is an incredible show. It is one of my favorites since we got in rid of Bill and Ted. No. Yes, I know. Uh, but I really love this show. It features aerialists. It features magic. It features incredible dancing. And it is adult in nature. So if anyone does not like any of that, uh, I would recommend sitting the show out. There is also a lot of fire and pyro in that show. Hell to the yeah. So we do have to be there at 9 o'clock, but we're going to make a pretty lengthy bar stop so you guys can go ahead and get some drinks to bring to the show with you. Uh, we're going to be going through Crypt TV before we hit the bar. 
Has anyone heard of or seen Crypt TV? No. Yep. All right, so I didn't hear of it until I started working for Halloween Horror Nights uh, when we went through training. But once we uh, started learning about it, I started watching a couple episodes and I fell in love with it. So if you haven't seen it, I would recommend going home and watching it. You can watch it on YouTube uh, or Facebook Watch. They're also coming out with a new television show on uh, streaming on Peacock, which is called The Girl in the Woods. So that's the first time they're gonna be getting into uh, television uh, series. Uh, Crypt TV was actually found that by Jason Blum, uh, who is known for Blumhouse Productions and films like Insidious and The Purge and Happy Death Day, all of which have been featured at our event before. Uh, and Eli Roth has actually directed some episodes as well, uh, who made the movie Hostile and also directed our commercial for 2017, our 2017 event. So as we walk through there, you're going to see some of the famous monsters that you may have seen in Crypt TV, like Walter from uh, Milk and Cookies. You're also going to see the look -see, and you will even see a glimpse of the girl in the woods from the new television show. So we're going to head into Crypt TV right now. The scare zones that we went through, which one did you like the most? Those like bird looking ones? The last one we went through, yeah. the, the TV one? Yeah, or like the spider. The one spider before something. that, I don't remember. I think the scaring has like had an effect on my short term memory. Yeah. Oh my god. That was a lot of fun. Actually, those are good scare zones. Oh. Grab mine. Wendy. So which scare zone did you like that we went through? I kind of like that last one. Yeah? I thought that was pretty cool. It yeah. was. That was a spectacular show. I'm glad you guys question. enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Like, I would come back just to watch that show. Really? Really? Yeah. 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 I, went, I mean, I was elevated next to that black box, and that was a. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys uh, like the magic aspect of it, too? Oh, so, I, I, I love magic. Well, we were actually going to be heading to our next couple of houses. Um, the first house we are going to be going to is Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House. And then after that one, we're going to be going to. Beetlejuice. Whoa. So we're gonna head that way now. What'd you guys think of the of the show? Oh my gosh, that was, that was phenomenal. phenomenal. So you've never seen any of the past shows. 
That was, in my opinion, one of the best shows they've ever had here. Yeah, now, I, I guess I don't have anything to compare it to, but the song choice, the lighting, the pyrotechnics, the costumes, the storyline, like, that was a 10 out of 10. It was, was amazing. Was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I have not been to a metal show, unfortunately, since COVID, and that was the fix I needed. There you go. What did you think? That was amazing. I absolutely loved that. That was like the first show ever that I've been to like that. Astounding. Cool. Thanks, guys. And so to get to our next couple houses, we are going to be going backstage. So like I said, uh, no filming uh, or photography while we are backstage. You may also see a couple of scare actors or team members while we are back there who are taking their break. So when we walk back there, let's go ahead and just make sure that we mind their privacy and give them that break they need so that they can keep scaring us to their full potential. And who here has seen Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House? We have two, three, four. All right. So for those of you who have not seen it, it is on Netflix. It is my girlfriend's favorite show. I have seen it about 16 times. It's eight episodes long and it starts out slow but gets better and better and better as it goes. So I would highly recommend watching it. The show revolves around Ukraine who moves his family into Hill House to renovate it as a fixer upper. Ukraine is played by Henry Thomas. Does anyone know what Universal picture Henry Thomas starred in? E.T. E.T. He was Elliot in E.T. So that's a fun fact, especially since we have Hill House at Universal. So when Ukraine moves into Hill House, they start finding weird things as they're renovating it. And weird things start happening to the family, including his wife. As they grow older, they move out to Hill House, out of Hill House, and move in on their own. But in the show, you'll see that the house continues to beckon them back. And that's what's going to happen to us tonight. The house is beckoning us, and we are going to follow in the footsteps of the Crane family as we experience what kind of horrors await us in Hill House. So are you guys ready to go to Hill House? All right, let's go. Haunting of Hell House was astounding. That was a really great haunt. Um, I was they terrified. Were telling, right? Terrified. You're welcome. So they were telling us that this was the most complex, uh, detailed facade that uh, uh, Universal's ever done. Without a question, amazing. We are going to go ahead and see the ghost with the most next. You all know his name. What is it? Beetlejuice. Yep. All right, so we're gonna head over that way now. So it sounds like everyone's super excited for Beetlejuice. This is the movie that got me into the horror genre, horror comedy genre. It's directed by Tim Burton and it won an Academy Award. It stars the ghost with the most. And for those of you, for those of you who are familiar with the film, you're going to see familiar scenes like Dante's Inferno, the Maitland's Haunted Attic, the model town and graveyard and the famous checkered lost souls hallway so are you guys ready to turn on the juice and see what shakes loose yeah. Yeah. all right we have to summon him first and by doing the way to do that is saying his name three times so on three we're going to do that ready one two three beetlejuice 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 was fun. That's a great one. I got lucky and got to see it last year uh, for the weekend that they had it open. That's a fun, fun house. I recommend it. All right, what do we all think of that house? Awesome. All right, that's the fun house of the year. That's the one that has that vortex tunnel. So that's a lot of fun that we brought that back the last time we used that was in 2016 in Chance's year at Lunatic's Playground. So that was the last year we had that. Next up, we're going to be going to Puppet Theater Captive Audience and the Wicked Growth Realm of the Pumpkin. So we're going to be going out this way, following it around, and all the way back up. Get ready, because we only have three more left for the night. So we are going to be going through the Wicked Growth Realm of the Pumpkin. That is going to be the second house that we go through tonight. In Wicked Growth, we are going to learn that Halloween does not come from cultural traditions 
but it comes from the Pumpkin Lord. As we go through this house, you guys are going to see a witch who is casting a spell to bring the Pumpkin Lord back to our realm so that we can celebrate Halloween yet again. And you will see the Pumpkin Lord's minions as we go through that house. You will see the vines glo glowing and growing as we go through that house. And they will grow bigger and bigger until maybe we run face to face in with the Pumpkin Lord. That will be the second house we go through. The first house is right behind you. It's the beautiful Granger Theater, or so it used to be. In the early 1900s, there was an earthquake in California that destroyed the theater, trapping the Gyrian Republic Ballet and Pasek's puppet troupe inside, as well as their captive audience. So, after many, many years, Pasek's puppet troupe went mad and they wanted the show to go on. So they started chopping up the audience members and the ballet troupe and built the most realistic and most grotesque puppets you have ever seen to put on the greatest puppet show known to man. Now, tonight is opening night and I managed to pull some strings, there's my dad joke for you of the night, to get us tickets to the first show. So if you guys are ready, it is curtain call. So we just went through uh, the Puppet Master Theater and the Pumpkin King. Both of those haunts are really, really good. The Puppet Master Theater was really, really well done and uh, lots of jump scares. Got a lot of people in our group screaming. But the uh, Pumpkin uh, Lord was fantastic. The, uh, the effects, uh, the scares, it was beautiful. Actually, really well done. We have one more house left to go. Oh, it's been a long night. <laughs> What did you think of the last two houses? So the pumpkin patch one, I don't know if you noticed this, but the floor was like squishy once we yeah. were inside the pumpkin. And I thought that was like such attention to detail that really added to the whole experience. That was, yeah, that was really good. I think I'm probably going to have abs after this from all the yeah. uh, crunches that, and jumps. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one though. What did you think uh, of the puppet? I like that one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby. That was a, that was a really good one. Oh wow! Look at that. Yeah. Of the two, which was your favorite? The pumpkin one. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think the attention, the detail, going over the the bridge with the holes on the bottom. Yeah. I oh, thought that, that was, was really trippy. That was really well done. Yeah. The glowing vines. Yeah. There was. I think that one was. Um, puppet one was more interesting with the storyline. Yep. Yeah. And then, I mean, if you didn't take the R.I.P. tour, you lose the majority of the story. You lose the storyline. I don't think that they explain, I mean, if you have a tour guide, like we have Chris, who's done a phenomenal job, but if you don't have a tour guide, I don't think there's any explanation. You don't get the, you don't get the story. The backstory, the yep. history, and that really adds to the whole experience because if you're just walking into a house and you don't know the backstory, it's like... It's still I'm interesting, now. but now it's really interesting. Yeah. All right, so welcome to Scary Horror in the Heartland. In 2008, we created an event where we needed a spooky town. And Laura Sauls, one of our creative directors of Halloween Horror Nights said, I got one. I used to live in one. It was Cary, Ohio. Cary, Ohio is a very real town in Ohio that Laura Sauls used to live in. It had haunted covered bridges, haunted train stations, haunted churches. So see, we said, bet, that fits the bill. So we have been using that town in many of our events for many scare zones and many houses like Slaughter Cinema, Depths of Fear, Twisted Traditions, The Schoolhouse, and many, many more, which you will be seeing in this house. Again, keeping up with the theme of our 30th year, this is another anniversary house, and this is one of my favorites, and I'm so glad that we saved this for last. 
because it truly is a throwback. Now, one thing I like to explain about Cary, Ohio is no one really knows why bad things find their way there. No one really talks about what happens in Cary, Ohio. The locals don't like anyone finding out. They don't like the news stations finding out and they don't let any outsiders in. So to get in this house, we actually have to go through the sewers. We're gonna sneak through the sewers and then climb our way up into the town. Well, so keep stinks. an eye out for that. So are you guys ready for our last house of the night? Yeah. All right, let's head on in to Cary, Ohio. What'd you guys think? Phenomenal. I know I keep using that word, but that's like literally the word of the evening. So what'd you like about it? The chainsaw guy at the very end. Yeah. That, that, that made me jump. <laughs> what about you? All right, so can we all enjoy our trip to Cary, Ohio? All right, cool. So we have one more scare zone to go to. I always save this one for nighttime because it is absolutely beautiful at night. It is in our Central Park location. We are always known for doing beautiful scare zones in that location. And that is going to be Gorewood Forest, home of the Terra Queen. And I will tell you guys all about it once we get over there. The uh, haunt that we just went through, it was good but I didn't find it great. Um, it's not what I would have saved for the very last haunt, since the best part about it was the chainsaw guy at the end. That's my personal opinion. We have made it to our final scare zone of the night. 15 years ago, the storyteller, who is one of our icons, told a story of the Terror Queen. The Terror Queen was featured at Halloween Horror Nights 15. She committed many crimes and made many sacrifices throughout the event. But at the end of that year, she herself was sacrificed. But as legend tells, right before she was sacrificed, she promised that she would be back 15 years later. Here we are 15 years later, give, a t give or take a year. And she has fulfilled her promise and has returned to once again torment our event. You guys are going to walk through this zone and you are going to see the terror mines and the creatures that infest that environment. You're going to see the trees pulsating red with the blood of the Terra Queen sacrifices. And as we make our way out of the zone, you will see the Terra Queen herself performing a sacrifice right at the front of that zone. So are you guys ready to face the Terra Queen? Yes. All right, let's head on into Gorewood Forest.
so we sorry. Did the Norwood Forest. That was it's awesome. It's a beautiful zone, isn't it? All the lights, the effects, so everything. Let's talk some final thoughts about HHN 30 over at Universal Studios Orlando. This was a really good year for HHN. It was a lot of fun. The RIP tour is absolutely spectacular, as always. If you watched my video from 2018, um, I told you it was worth every single penny. Uh, that opinion hasn't changed at all. It is absolutely worth doing the RIP tour at Universal. The houses this year were very, very good. Um, the Scare Zones was fantastic. The show was probably the best show I've ever seen um, at HHN. That was absolutely worth going just to watch the show alone. Now, there was a small piece of criticism um, the RIP tour normally lets you in about a half hour prior to um, your scheduled appointment. So if you were scheduled at 7.30, you could actually go in at 7 o'clock, check in, and sit down and eat. Ours was at 6 p.m. And they didn't rope drop until 6 p.m. So by the time we got over there and checked in, because there was a line to check in, and got to the buffet, got our food, we had about 10 minutes to eat before we had to leave on the tour. And that, that was a problem because realistically, all of us were hungry. None of us actually got to eat very much. Um, what I showed you on the video, that was it. That was all the time I had. And um, I couldn't even finish my dinner. We ran out of time. And I had to run to grab the desserts and take one bite out of each um, for this video. So uh, we talked to um, our guide about it and to pass it up the chain. Uh, my opinion is personally that if you have a 6 p.m. RIP tour, they should actually allow you guys in at 5.30 to go over there, check in, and eat if you're not interested in seeing the opening ceremony. We also had a private viewing area of the opening ceremonies and we couldn't see anything. It was like, why? You know, it, it's, I don't know, it, it just would have made more sense to have um, a better view of Jack or why not just allow us to go in. Let's talk about times a little bit when you're considering doing the RIP tour. Our tour was at 6 p.m. and we left to go through our first scare zone around 6.30, 6.35. Our tour didn't end until after 11 p.m. It's not a four hour tour, it's a five hour tour with all the stops, the shows and everything. So if you do a later tour than six, you're not leaving until after midnight. 
if you're okay with that, if you're there, you know, okay with being there until like one o'clock or so, uh, consider taking a later tour. But there wasn't a single person on our tour who wasn't exhausted and ready to go home uh, by the end of the night. There were a few people that wanted to stay and watch the water show and then head home. But the majority just wanted to go home after the show. They had seen everything, done everything, had a great time. So keep that in mind when you're looking at times to do the RIP tour. The later you start, the later you get now out of there that evening. So that's something to take in consideration. Back in 2018, our tour guide was JC, and she is still a tour guide. So if you get the opportunity to come to HHN and do the RIP tour, um, I recommend you ask for either Chris or JC. We actually asked for JC this year, um, and she wasn't working uh, the night we were doing our RIP tour. Uh, she was fantastic. Uh, I'm sure she's still amazing, um, but Chris did a fantastic job. So I would recommend you ask for either one of those. Overall review, um, RIP tour. Worth every single penny. Go and just enjoy it. Um, if you only have one night to do HHN, that is absolutely, without a question, the way to do it. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider supporting us on PayPal or Patreon. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.